It is the Middle Triassic, 235 million years ago, a time when the world was hot and dry. Most of the land is covered in various forms of desert, and hardy flora dominate the world. Much of life on land is clustered around sources of water, but for some, they have taken to the water and carved out all new lifestyles. Of the shores that will one day be Germany, a number of reptiles spend most of their lives out at sea, with some becoming far better adapted for this lifestyle than others. Resting on the rocky shores are a small colony of the lizard-like species Placodus. 2.5 meters long, with armored scoots running along its body and short legs. It may not look well adapted for life on the waves, but that is because it's not the waves these reptiles are concerned about, it's what's under them. Like modern marine iguanas, they bask in the sun before crawling into the water and use their broad tails to swim. But it isn't long before they stop swimming and sink down. Once reaching the bottom, they begin crawling around the various rocks and pieces of debris, much like their ancestors did on land. They are searching for food, and in these Triassic waters there is plenty, from fish to other marine reptiles, but the Pocotus are after a different, much slower food source. Hard-shelled creatures like mollusks, bivalves, shellfish, and crabs. Many too tough for other predators to crack, but the Pocotus are fully equipped to deal with this. The large, chisel-like front teeth protrude forward, allowing them to grip onto prey and pry them off any surface they are fixed to. Then the back teeth, which are broad and flat, along with a similarly built back palate, crush the hard shell, breaking them into smaller pieces, much easier to swallow. Each one peeks into crevices their prey likes to hide in, or searches through the sand, hoping to knock into something that might be edible. Of course, they need to return to the surface for air, but they don't fill their lungs before diving. They want to sink to the bottom and not remain buoyant. This may sound risky, but they know not to dive too deep or go out too far into open water, and their broad tails are easily capable of propelling them back to the surface when a breather is needed. Around them are other similarly sized creatures such as coelacanths and sharks, though they are no threat to adult Placodus, thanks to their armored hide. Putting that armor to shame, however, is the equal in length but almost twice as wide, Siamodus, which may look like a turtle, but is more closely related to Placodus itself, with a wide, flat carapace covered in spines that run down the length of its body and even its tail. It would be a very confident predator indeed that would try to tackle a Siamodus. These round reptiles have a similar diet to Placodus, being hard shell specialists, also known as Durophagus. Though having your head only stick out slightly ahead of your very wide shoulders means that Siamodus aren't as good at pulling prey from tight spaces, and so stick to more open areas. Unlike the Placodus, however, they spend the entirety of their lives in the water. Only females return to land to lay their eggs in the sand. With such short legs, this is a difficult endeavor that leaves the eggs and young vulnerable. Which is why many other marine reptiles evolved to give birth to live young. Below the waves, the two placodonts slowly yet gracefully go about their day. Above the waves near the shore, the long-necked Tanistrophius rests on the rock, ready to dip their heads into the water to grab passing fish. They are near an area where seagrass is able to grow, the favorite food of yet another species of placodont, and possibly the strangest of them all. One meter long, and almost as wide, is Hanotis. Its massive shell giving it unmatched protection, while making it resemble turtles most of all. Unlike its relatives, Hanotis is chiefly herbivorous, using its wide flat beak to cut up seagrass or scrape algae off of rocks. They don't just live out in the oceans, but in brackish water, and even swim up river to find food. Though they do have to be wary. Early pliosaurs mainly live in fresh water, and some have the jaw strength to crack open even a Hanotis' impressive shell. Near the shore, however, they are mostly safe, so long as they keep their heads out of the jaws of eager predators. Not much in these shallows can harm them. 
the three different groups of Placodons swim around each other in the warm waters. A symbol of how well some animal families were able to diversify and thrive in a hot, dry, and harsh world. One of the calmest and most tranquil environments of the Triassic. Hello fellow travellers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down one of the most diverse families of aquatic reptiles from the Triassic, the Placodonts. Placodonts are a family of reptiles that belong to the Sauropterygia order, the same order as Pliosaurs and Plesiosaurs. The first specimen of this family was discovered in 1830, with the name Placodontia coined in 1871. They have since been found throughout Europe, the Middle East, North Africa, and China. They live from the Middle to the Late Triassic, from 245 to 201 million years ago. While some species resemble lizards, others develop wide shells similar to turtles, however Placodonts aren't closely related to either, having convergently evolved these body plans, likely from similar environmental pressures. One of their key features are their teeth, that are few in number, large, flat, and sometimes protrude from the jaws, used to crush hard-shelled prey such as mollusks, bivalves, brachiopods, and various invertebrates. This specialized diet is known as Gyrophagus, but not all of them live this way, such as the species Henotus, but we'll cover that shortly. They are all considered to be marine reptiles, and while some are clearly more adapted to life in the water than others, it's not known how much time they would have spent on land, if any, with the older, more lizard-like species possibly resting and reproducing on land, while younger species could have spent their entire lives in the water if they evolved to give live birth. Their bones are quite dense and often have heavy armor plating, which while excellent for defense against predators, may have made it difficult for them to float, even making them negatively buoyant, which isn't as bad as it might sound as they had to look for food that was often on the seafloor, but may have restricted the majority of species to shallow waters making their expansion into deep water either dangerous or even impossible. That's the basics of Placodonts as a whole, so let's take a look at their family tree and go into more detail on individual species. The order of Placodontia is broken up into two smaller families, Placodontidae, which contains two genera, and Siamodontidae, which contains several subfamilies with over ten genera. Let's start with the namesake of the group, Placodus. Placodus was originally named in 1833, with remains being found in Germany, Poland, and France, plus a subspecies found in China. It lived between 245 and 235 million years ago. It grew to between 2.5 and 3 meters long, had a thick, robust skull, wide barrel-like body, short limbs, and a long, flattened tail. The front teeth protruded from the front of the skull, and were chisel-shaped. These would have been used to pluck up prey from the seafloor, or from rocks and other areas where they had fixed themselves to. The back teeth were broad and flat, and were used in conjunction with the hard protrusions on the upper palate from the upper jaw to crush the protruding armour of their prey, before expelling the majority of the shell or armour and swallowing the soft body. We can see Placotus had a very large and solid backward protruding lower jaw, this had powerful muscles attached to it, giving it plenty of strength to crush and split open its preferred meals. On top of its head, it had what's called a parietal eye. This doesn't work the same way as our eyes do, but helps animals who have it to better detect changes in light. For marine animals, it also is thought to help with orientation, useful when you're floating or swimming, especially if the surf is rough. Placotus's body is very wide and round, the vertebra and ribs were firmly connected and heavy, as were the belly ribs, making the body quite stiff and rigid. It also had armor that ran down its back, so while it was well protected against predators, it wouldn't have been a very graceful swimmer, and was likely even more awkward on land. So, it would have used its broad tail for propulsion and its short limbs that were likely webbed for steering and crawling. We now move on to Siamodus, a genus first described in 1863, found across Europe and China. 
There are six species that lived during the Middle to Late Triassic between 245 and 235 million years ago. The different species grew to between 1 and 1.5 meters long, weighing between 5 and 25 kilograms. The skull was heart-shaped, with the snout being short and pointed, and the orbits not far behind. The rear of the skull then massively expands out, which doubled as both protection for the skull and anchoring points for strong muscles to give it a crushing bite force. It should be mentioned here that many placodonts are thought to have also been suction feeders. While not effective on things like clams that firmly attach themselves to a surface and would need to be pried off. For prey like crabs, this would be effective at rapidly sucking in a target and quickly crunching them with their thick teeth. Speaking of teeth, we can see it had very few and they were flat and disc-like, perfect for pulverizing armor. Moving to the armor on the back, here we can clearly see how later genera evolved to become more turtle-like. Unlike turtles, however, Siamotus's armor is divided into two sections, one between the neck and hips, and the other going from the hips to the tail base. Both are flat and lined with rows of armor, and the sides are flanked by rows of spikes that ran down both carapace and the tail. The tail also has two additional rows of spikes running along the top and bottom. These separated sections would have given excellent protection, as well as making the animal a bit more flexible than turtles. Its limbs would have had to do all the work for propulsion and manoeuvring. Though it's speculated Siamotus may have been able to come onto land, how much time it's spent on land, such as if it was just laying eggs, or they needed to sleep on land, isn't known. Next we have Henotus, originally named in 1936, with remains being found in Germany and Portugal. It lived between 237 and 227 million years ago. It grew to about one metre long, and impressively, was almost as wide as well. Its shell was built like a turtle, with the top being a single carapace and the bottom being a plastron, though its shell is made up of a higher percentage of bone than keratin, and extended far beyond the limbs. Because of this and their small size, it's assumed to notice is one of the most aquatic of the placodonts. The skull was wide and shovel-like, having a beak with baleen-like structures further back. Because of this, it was originally thought to be a filter feeder, but now it's thought to be a herbivore, slicing through aquatic flora or scraping algae off rocks. Though of course it could have still been a filter feeder, sucking in any plant material floating around it and filtering out the water with its baleen-like teeth. It should also be noted that Hanotis is the only member of this family found in non-marine deposits. So it was likely living in brackish or even fresh water, Finally, we have Plecochelles, a genus named in 1902, found in Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy. It lived from the Norian to the Retirian stages of the Late Triassic, between 221 and 205 million years ago. It grew to 90 centimeters long, had the characteristic heart-shaped skull, a wide flat body that formed a protective shell, four limbs that had evolved into flippers, which actually extended beyond the shell, and a short tail. Right away, you'll notice the skull has an extended rostrum of both the upper and lower jaw. This is not thought to be an adaptation for dislodging prey, but may have been used to probe and sift through sand and sediment to locate prey. It's even proposed that it may have inhaled water and sediment through the rostrum, so it could better smell traces of prey and better track their location. The rest of the skull is similar to Siamotus, with the wide jaw reinforced by strong muscles, and very few teeth that were flat and round. The single shell that covered its body was almost completely flat, with plates of osteoderms for extra defense. The limbs had lengthened and expanded out past the shell, evolving to look much like modern sea turtles, but with its digits still visible. This would have given it much better control and propulsion through the water, though likely meaning that it lived entirely in the water as a result. As we can see, the family of Placodontia made many adaptations to better specialize in their dietary niche, whether they went after hard shell crushing prey or were herbivores, in the case of Anotis. As they dispersed into more species, they quickly evolved better physical defenses, as other marine predators like the Nophosaurs, Plesiosaurs, and Ichthyosaurs grew in size and diversified as well.
though they, like many others, didn't survive the end Triassic mass extinction. Their specialised diet, and mostly being limited to shallower waters, likely playing a part in their disappearance from the world's oceans. Still, they are a very interesting family, as they diversified very quickly in a relatively short amount of time, adapting rapidly for both food and predators. Showing just how much evolution can mould a group once it becomes secondarily aquatic. But what do you think of the placodonts? And for my question of the week, do you want me to do a part 2 for this video, to cover more genera and go into the family in more detail? Or would you like me to do a video dedicated to a specific genera, to break them down more thoroughly? With that being said, what placodont would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.